is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Signal Hill, which is surrounded by the city of Long Beach. And guess who's here today? The mayor of Long Beach. Hello. His name is Robert Garcia. You're the mayor. And I'd like to speak with you about the evolution of the minimum wage sure. in our great state of California and here in Southern California. Last June, L.A. voted to increase its minimum wage to $15 by 2020. Right. That put a lot of pressure on cities in L.A. County mm -hmm. to look at their minimum wage. Long Beach being the second largest city in L.A. County, right. how did L.A.'s decision influence Long Beach? Uh, well, it, it did. I mean, the truth is, is that if you have a city like Los Angeles, with, which is the largest city of the 88 cities in the right. county, and they're lifting the wage, you don't want to be in a situation where uh, the best workers are going to get paid more are now all going to another city in right. Los Angeles. And so in Long Beach, which is a, a pretty progressive city, we've actually been talking about increasing the minimum wage even when L.A. was. And so once L.A. Uh, went and increased theirs, then the county uh, increased their minimum right, wage. Right, in unincorporated areas. In unincorporated areas. areas. Uh, we had been having the discussion already, and so then we went ahead and, and did a minimum wage increase as well. Uh, but, sir, one could argue, I don't believe Long Beach is contiguous with the city of L.A. anywhere. I mean, it's a nice distance. Sure. Not as far as a lot of people realize. It's pretty close. Did that, at some level, dissuade you from increasing the minimum, minimum wage? Because, look, you could say a lot of things about minimum wage increases, but they do put pressure on small businesses, on restaurants. And since you're not contiguous, could you say, we're going to hold? Well, we do share, I mean, San Pedro. So on the, on the bridge, we oh, connect I guess you're very right. close. Yeah, I guess you're right. But, but it's, it's bigger than that, I think, because uh, in Long Beach's case, uh, we were really concerned about making sure that we had the best workers, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, if you look at what we did in L.A., it's actually a little different. And so, it uh, is. So we went to um, $13 in 2019. Uh, L.A. kind of went automatically to, uh, to, the, to the 15 mm -hmm. number. And in 2019, if economic conditions were, were strong at 13, then the council could then adopt and then have a pathway to 15 and then go to 15 uh, by 2021. So it was a little bit a little bit different. Uh, actually, our model is much similar to what the state ended up finally and let's, adopting, yes. uh, which was great. And of course, it was us, uh, Pasadena, Santa Monica. There were a handful of other cities that also moved forward. And Pasadena actually adopted something very similar to Long Beach. So let's talk about what the state did. And this, in at some way, was a bit surprising. Right. We know that there were competing initiatives that were going to be on the ballot in November to increase the minimum wage. That put pressure on the legislature mm -hmm. and the governor to see, well, maybe we should do this on our own. Because as we know now, once an initiative is submitted, the legislature can look at it right. and negotiate with the drafters. So ultimately what the state did is they passed a minimum wage increase that gets us to $15 in 2022. Two, right. um, there's a delay if it's a small business. So it's a year after mm -hmm. Long Beach. Right. So it's one year after Long Beach, uh, about two years after Los Angeles. Uh, but it's great because at, at the end of the day for us, we obviously wanted to make sure that workers were paid fairly. We wanted to make sure we also had the delay for small businesses and for nonprofits. But now do you have a delay for, in Long we Beach? Do, we do. We do. But the great thing about the state going is it kind of keeps everyone on the same playing field. And I think that was really important that the state moved. I don't think the state would have moved had they not had not had cities like Los Angeles oh, really? and Long Beach and Santa Monica and the county and Bay Cities moving first. So I think that really was an impetus for the state to move forward, uh, which was great. And they adopted similar ordinances that we did. Are you concerned, though, when you look at your city and even surrounding cities, a lot of small businesses, a lot of great restaurants and Look, economists have said the minimum wage impacts restaurants most dramatically. And all of a sudden, you may start seeing pressures in terms of employee size. Mm -hmm. You see prices start to spike a bit. It's all balanced, but is that of concern to you? Absolutely. And w one thing that we've actually discussed is, uh, you know, California is one of the few states uh, that does not allow uh, tipped employees, like at restaurants, to actually have a different wage a level like New York you can actually separate out oh, I didn't know that. Abs absolutely yeah. and so in, and so in California it's a little bit different I was a waiter for five years I like that uh, I remember I didn't even look at my check I mean all my money was in, was in my was my tips and so I do think that we have to look long term uh, at at the wage level for tipped employees particularly waiters and servers at restaurants so I think so, there's interest in that but let me ask you since you were a waiter yeah how did those years inform your thinking process as to the minimum wage discussion. I mean, not many mayors sure. of major cities in America were also waiters when they were younger. Yeah, Some I mean, maybe, but. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. informed a lot, but also what informed me is, listen, if you go, I always tell people, 
just take a moment, next time you go through a drive-thru, whether it's uh, McDonald's or Carl's Jr. or whatever drive-thru you're going through, take a moment and pay attention to who's handing you your food. Yeah. Pay attention to the person taking your order. Some of those people have been working there for five, six, seven years. Not because they should just go out and get an education, because yeah. they have no other options. And so I think that that person, if they're hardworking, we should be paying them a living wage so they can support themselves. This whole notion that minimum wages are just for teenagers is, as you know, not true. The vast majority of people that are earning the minimum wage, first and foremost, are women, and secondly, are heads of household or have children in, in, in the so home. So let me ask you then, because one of the raps on the state minimum wage increase is it didn't make certain distinctions. There are no exclusions for teenagers, let's say. Sure. And let's face it, in the LA Long Beach area, $15 is less than if you're in Fresno or Bakersfield. That's right. And as you know, in Oregon, uh, they tiered their minimum wage increase. Mm -hmm. Should California have looked at that more dramatically to look at our very different regions? Because it could put a lot of pressure on businesses in, let's say, Tulare. So I think where, where there should be a focus on, which is something that we did, is looked and tiering certain types of jobs that teenagers or youth uh, are right. more likely to, to have. Okay. So we have what we created in Long Beach through our ordinance, which is a little different than LA, is we also created a different little bit of a wage for seasonal work. Uh, uh, so we allow lower, lower for, so for so seasonal work, kind of internship type work, the kind of work where someone will come in just for a summer or maybe for five or six months. Uh, we're we're allowing businesses to actually not pay the full wage. But with the state law, does your law get preempted on so, that point? Well, because Long Beach is a charter city. Uh, charter cities actually over supersede. Oh, you don't get preempted. Over supersede uh, the state oh, minimum okay. wage. Okay, interesting. Um, however, of course, we right now are in discussion. So all the mayors that have already implemented minimum wages are in conversations about whether or not we're going to line up with the state. I see. Because what we don't want to do is create a patchwork of wages if the whole state's going to go on a certain schedule. So that discussion is uh, continues. As you know, many folks who make minimum wage if they lose their job or otherwise, may fall into homelessness. That's right. We are facing a homeless crisis in California, in Los Angeles County. Um, Long Beach is not immune from that. That's right. Talk to us about homelessness here in mm -hmm. Long Beach, the second largest city in Los Angeles County. The, the homeless challenge is really gonna be, I think, uh, the big challenge for us of the decade. Right. I mean, if you think about what's happening, I, I'm, I'm shocked when I drive around parts of Los Angeles and the county and I'm seeing what's beginning to happen. Uh, it, it's what it's sad. Most of these folks, as you know, have severe mental health uh, needs and challenges. Uh, a lot of them uh, have addiction uh, issues that, they, that, that need to be resolved. And so it's not as easy as just saying, here, here's a place or right. here's a shelter. It's much more complex than that. Is this an issue that is best addressed with cities, with counties, with the state, with the feds, all of the above, none of the above, some of the above? Uh, it has to be addressed, I believe, at the state level. I mean, there's, there's got to be federal support, but you have to look at a statewide or countywide process because it's not about, you know, you can't just as a city shuffle homeless people around. Right. They're, they're, they're not, you know, they're still here what, and they need services. What do you think about a proposal floating around in L.A. County that would create a tax, I believe, on millionaires to uh, fund homeless programs? I mean, I'm, oh, I'm open to any proposal out there that's willing to help uh, this, the, the homeless challenge that we have. Obviously, we, you know, those details aren't, aren't clear yet. We they don't know not. what's going to be on the ballot, so it's hard to say if I'd support that or not. Um, but I do support us investing more in the issue. And so uh, one thing I'm really proud about in Long Beach is we're going to be the first California city, large California city, that will be certified that will have ended veteran homelessness. So we've mm. actually, as part of the, the that national challenge, and so we actually have done a lot of work there. We've housed a lot of veteran homeless folks. Why we've built is it housing. that that is a bright spot in the homeless crisis. Veteran homelessness is down. Dramatically down. Why? I think part of it's because it's presidential intervention. I mean, the uh, president said a few years ago, we want to end veteran homelessness, and then resources went in that direction. He's Robert Garcia. He is the mayor of the beautiful city of Long Beach, California. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We thank you so much for joining us on Charter Local Edition.